Hello everyone, today we're doing something a little bit different. There's not really a structure to this video at all, we're just going to be exploring in Space Engine. Um, I'm thinking we start in our solar system and take a look at all the different planets, and from there we start to move out to other stars in the Milky Way and nebulas and such, and eventually leave the Milky Way entirely. So here's Earth, this is where we're actually going to start. And you can see it's just beautiful. The realism on Space Engine is awesome. And if you put it in a realistic lighting, this looks like a real shot from space, especially like back here. So you can actually go and land on all of these islands down here. Um, the It doesn't generate like actual realistic. I wish that they would add like Google Earth support with Space Engine. So it would be like Google Earth for the Earth model and then just the space engine for everything else. But here's a little mountain on this island. I don't know exactly what island we're on, but you can see the moon is right there. And that looks real. Like you could take a picture of the moon like this and say it was real. Um, the moon at night also looks beautiful. So let's go look at the night side. It does have city lights, but once you get close, they it's just kind of like glowing ground. So the detail only goes so far for the Earth model, but on procedurally generated planets, it generates lots of stuff even past this level of detail. So now that we checked out Earth, let's look for the moon. I don't know what that star is. The moon is right here. And let's go look at it. Wow. This is one of my favorite things to look at in Space Engine, just because we can see the moon very clearly from Earth. So looking at it, it, it's like familiar, but we can actually go and land on it, which is really cool. It lets us do something that we would will probably never be able to do in our lifetimes, but with something that we see all the time. Because you see the moon, you know, all the time at night. So this crater here looks pretty cool. Um, so these darker areas are called seas. And only one side ever faces the Earth. And it's this side right here. This side actually back here is the dark side. And this side never faces towards the Earth because the moon is tidally locked. But we can see it in Space Engine. Even though the side's not mapped out as well, you can see it's kind of blurry. But once you like, it'll still generate these craters close up. And this side over here has been mapped out better. So these craters are going to be in more detail. But there's the moon. Let's check out some other stuff in our system. We'll just go through the planets. So here's Mercury. It looks very similar to the moon, actually. They're about uh, the same size. So it's cool to see a planet. So like if the moon was orbiting where Mercury is, it would be a planet, which is crazy. So it does look really similar to the moon. You could see, whoa, that crater sh shot out like white lines. Mercury is not too interesting. There's the sun. It's a lot brighter up here. But now let's go to Venus. Venus looks really cool without its atmosphere and clouds because those are covering the whole surface these very thick clouds it almost makes it look like a gas giant but without the clouds it has its own surface which we can actually go observe so let's go land on venus and then take a look at with the clouds the sky is just white and our temperature is 516 degrees celsius it's super hot on venus venus is the hottest planet there's venus you can see the whole milky way in the background there and our realistic lighting on venus there it is Okay, next is Earth, but we've already seen Earth, so we'll go past that one and straight to Mars. Okay, here's Mars. 
And you can see it's moons, Phobos and Deimos. Let's go check out Phobos first. So these are asteroid-like moons. They're really small moons. You can see Space Engine does its best with what information it does have. You can see the texture's a little bit wonky. Um, but when later in the video when we get to procedurally generated stuff, it can just make up everything because there's nothing it has to go off of. Oh, it looks like its texture hitbox is a little bit broken for Phobos. That's all right. Where did Mars go? Oh, there's Mars. So here's Olympus Mons, actually, I believe. That big mountain there. I'm not sure. So Mars does have ice on its poles, so it's cool to see that on here. And to be able to just view Mars. And we can actually see, if we let time play, we could see Valles Marineris, which is the biggest canyon in the entire solar system. It's on Mars, so let's speed up time till we can see that. There it is, this giant canyon here. Are those clouds on Mars? Yes, look, it's showing some clouds in its atmosphere. Really cool. So let's go down into the canyon and look at it. You can see it from space. Let's go down into it. So it will load these mountains in higher quality when you get close, but it can only know so much because there's only such high definition pictures that we've taken of it. So you can see when you zoom in really far, it gets blurry. But if you fly into that, it'll still try to guess what it kind of would look like here. But there's Mars and this is Olympus Mons right here, the biggest mountain and volcano in the entire solar system. So there's Mars. I wonder what this dot is here. Jupiter. So that's actually where we're going next. Jupiter. Here it is. We can get its texture to load. Maybe. It usually has a higher texture. I think maybe my DLC for the solar system is not active. But there's Jupiter. Here's Saturn. Beautiful ring system on Saturn. And you can see all of its moons as little dots out here. There's a lot of them. Uranus is next. Check that out. You can see its small ring system. Um, if you get the lighting right. You can see little lines right there. Neptune looks lighter blue on here than it does in a lot of pictures. There it is. There's its great dark spot. And you can actually see its rings, too. Very thin. Oh, and here's Andromeda Galaxy down here. Beautiful galaxy. Well, that's our solar system. We can check out Pluto, too. Here's Pluto. And Haumea, which is another dwarf planet with its rings. Amea is the only dwarf planet known to have rings. Make Make. Right here. Eris is right here. And that's it for our solar system. So pretty much everything else we'll be looking at is going to be procedurally generated, which means Space Engine just makes up stuff for it. But that also means that it could get super precise detail. So let's just pick a star. How about this one here? Okay, so let's see what planets it generates. Okay, so these are real known stars, so it doesn't actually generate any planets for them. Sometimes it does, but in this case it doesn't. So let's pick a star out here. How about this one? Okay, this one has generated some planets. So let's just go through this system and see what it has. So it's, it, the first planet is a gas giant. A hot super Neptune. Check that out. And in a realistic lighting, it has a brilliant blue color. And our next is actually also a gas planet. It looks like there's three gas giants in a row 
as our first planets in this system, and then we start to get to the rocky planets, like this one. So let's take a look at this one. Yellowish atmosphere, but it has clouds, so I wonder if there's any water on it. I don't see any immediately. Oh, is that water there? No, that's a little mountain volcano thing. So you can see the detail that it can generate on these planets because it doesn't have to go off anything. It can just... Oh, cloud. It can just make up whatever it wants, which allows it to make up insanely detailed landscapes. So you can just, like, pick a random spot and zoom in enough that it can actually, like... I mean, maybe not. But, like, you can see that it gets super detailed. I mean, you can get, there's a point where it's, it doesn't. But this ground like looks pretty desert-like. So, and our temperature here is 130 Celsius. So it is very hot. Basically a super desert world. And then we have another gas giant, but this one has rings, vertical-ish rings. Pretty cool. The gas giant's very bright. There we go. If we go like that, we can see better. And here's some of its moons. And it can also generate super advanced detail on the moons. Because it doesn't have to go off a map. Okay, let's find a new system. This nebula over here is looking cool. This is the Grand Nebula or the Carina Nebula. Pretty beautiful. Let's find a planet around here. Let's pick one of these stars. And then check out the planets. Okay, cold air at Aquaria. Let's go look at this one. So this is a binary system. But this planet, that looks like water, but it's actually not. This area has a lot of different nebulas. This is a diffuse nebula here. And this planet would be cool to live on because you get a view of all of these planets. Or all of these nebulas. So let's go land on it. And then look up into our night sky and see this huge nebula that takes up the majority of our night sky. Along with some other small nebulas. Like this one here. And where did that other one go? That's its moon. And then there's, looks like another nebula here. Which would be pretty hard to see. If you had a telescope you could see it though. And there's the view of the Milky Way. Is that another nebula there? Oh, I think we already saw that one. But there's another nebula inside of that one. Pretty cool. Okay, let's go look around. Oh, we didn't get a view of this nebula. This one looks cool. Let's go over to it. Beautiful nebula. Let's go in it and see if we can find a planet inside. On one of these stars, maybe? Oh, there's a ton of planets on this one. Super Oceanic Aquaria. So this one is a water world. Looks like there's no land at all. Just intense cloud formations and storms. I want one I can stand on land. Okay, Warm Eratera, this one. Yes, okay, so... Really, the nebula's all around us, so it doesn't really matter, but I'm going to land on the backside so we can look up and see what the nebula would look like realistically. Okay, so it's like pitch black. I'm on the ground right now, and a realistic lighting, I guess, looks like this. So there's kind of a sunset going on, and a lot of clouds, but if you do the HDR... Oh, I didn't mean to take that picture. It'll be back. Yes. It's kind of hard to see it through the atmosphere, I guess. But once you come out here, you can see it. Oh, it's just everywhere, this uh, bluish, pinkish nebula. Very bright star. Let's head over here and see what's over here. Okay, so here is the Milky Way. Oh, there's a giant star cluster right there. I want to go in that star cluster. Ah, okay, we're inside of it. And then we can click on any one of these. It looks like a lot of them are orange. And just like look at 
up here and you can see what kind of planets are in there. So I'm going to look around till I see one that interests me. This one looks cool. So let's go look at it. Whoa, super bright. There we go. A beautiful planet with a large moon right next to it. Very close to each other. The views of the planet from this moon are really cool. Like something like this. And you can just zoom in on them and get insane detail because these are all procedurally generated. These craters look like they're taking a second to load in. There we go. I could probably turn the loading speed up on them. Landscape loading speed, we'll turn that up. There we go, okay. You can see the detail that it can really create on these landscapes. It's crazy. And of course, if you have a faster computer, it's gonna be able to do this better. But the ability to just zoom in like this anywhere is so cool to me. Like, check that out. Like, you could just fly over this and tell someone that, like, this is a satellite view of a real celestial object. And they would totally think you were 100% for real. Really cool. I mean, yeah, it only loaded this small chunk, but let's let's look around some more. See what we can find. There's a star cluster over here. I'm just going to click on some stars. What is that? A white dwarf star is orbiting... So there's technically three stars in this system, but this white dwarf is orbiting. Let's turn on the orbital lines. Yes. Oh, okay. I see. Okay. So right here, that's the barycenter between this big star and this big star. Then... There's this white dwarf that we're looking at right now that has planets going around it. And then this star up here also has planets going around it, I believe. Does it? It might not. Oh, wait, wait, wait. This is a binary system here. There's two stars here that are very close to each other. I'm surprised they don't like rip each other apart. And then there is a third white dwarf binary with that out here. And then there's planets orbiting this entire system. So it's a three star system. Crazy. Let's take a look at some of these planets and what the view would look like. Okay, we'll turn off these lines. If we do land on this planet, I think those are thick clouds. Yes, so this one has water on it. So let's go land on it and check out what our stars would look like. I wonder if it looks similar to Tatooine or what. So the atmosphere is turned off. This is with it turned on. You can't really see anything. So I'm going to turn the atmosphere off. So you can see one star here. With, whoa, check that planet out there. That you could zoom in on if you had like a good enough telescope. And didn't want to burn your eyes out. And then you can see both the stars there. But they're so close together that from the surface, it looks like there's only two stars in the sky, when in reality, there are three. That's awesome. These lakes and stuff are cool. Look, the water like goes into a little mountain. Like this is super steep. In human scale, it's a super high cliff. We can actually see on our tracker landscape height. We are 1.4 kilometers high and down here at the water, it looks like zero meters is about right here. So that's like a kilometer high cliff. So if you jumped off this, that would be bad. You could jump into the water. Look, who I'm falling. 
Boom. Oh, look. Check out this under these underwater structures. You can, like, go deep sea diving in this underwater trench. With, like, realistic rock formations and such. This is cool. Oh. When you start going fast enough, it teleports you to the top. But that's one of the um, little water creations. It looks like there's a good amount of water, but like these big sections are going to be very desert like. I feel like if there was life, it would probably live around like these areas really close to the water. Where there'd be rivers and such. Because there doesn't seem to be too many oceans, so it could be all salt water or it could not. These moons, are these binary with each other? No, they're just really close to each other and they're both big. Let's check this one out. Beautiful. Landscape's definitely loading faster, so that's good. You have tripophobia, look away. Lots of holes and craters, and it's a very shiny surface. So you could really spend hours and hours in this game and just think about pretty much every single thing we're gonna look at today, no one's ever seen before. Because there's so many stars, and each star has planets, like, Zoom out, out, out. You could go to any one of these stars and look at its planets. Like, here's one with a ton of planets. Look at this planet. Looks like there's a, two lava-ish planets. Look at this one. Whoa. I want to see this in a realistic lighting. Super bright on the front and the back is lit pretty much completely by the lava we are going to go down onto the lava look at this the lava is so bright it outshines pretty much everything else that's so crazy even these darker areas when you get close and let the light adjust they're lit too like this area looks pitch black but i bet if we get close enough Oh, maybe not. These areas that look dark are really lava. So it's like the entire planet is just lava. This is like Mustafar or whatever it's called from Star Wars. I wonder if you can actually see the lava during the day. I guess this is supposed to be the lava because if you turn on the HDR lighting, this is the part that's glowing. Whoa, you can even see like the texture of the cooling down rock. That's really cool. And it looks like there is some that's cooled down fully, like right here. But even this... Look, it's like lava, dried lava mountain range. Awesome. This is one of the cooler planets I found. If you have Space Engine and you want to go to any of the planets that I'm looking at, you can just type this code in on the top left into your search bar right here. And then press go to and it'll take you here. Let's see this last planet in the system. Pretty cool. Is that water or just some interesting formations? Looks like formations. Pretty cool though. This one has a few moons. Oh, whoa. Five moons? No, wait. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine moons. I was like, yeah, more than five. On this little thing. And on the orbit lines and you can see them. Maybe. There we go. Pretty cool. Okay, let's go to this star. Let's see what's on this one. I just want to look. Why? It gives a lot of blue ones. This 
planet looks completely lava, like there's not even any of it that's cold. This looks like a star, but it's a planet. Whoa. And then it's binary planet or moon is lava too, but not completely like it's cooled down more. Pretty cool. We gotta switch our HDR because it's so bright. I want to look at one of these stars that's like out here beyond the Milky Way. That's a globular cluster. So that's not actually a star. That's a group of stars. Almost like a mini galaxy. Like there could very well, I pretty much, whoa, look how many. I guarantee there's life inside this cluster and we're going to look for it. Organic life, multicellular life. So, oh yeah, see there's life. So many instances of life just in this cluster. So if Space Engine's accurate in its predictions of life, um, like how much life there is, there's so much life out in the universe that it's crazy. Let's search it down. So this system has three objects with life. Um, and it looks like two of these moons have life. So a lot of it's subglacial. So let's change its biome to marine and terrestrial and see if there's life. So this is going to be rare, but it looks like we still do have some. This one has two objects with life. Only one filter though, so it doesn't matter. So pick this one. Um, okay, so this planet here has life on it in this cluster outside of the Milky Way, technically. I mean, it's still like gravitationally bound, but the entire Milky Way is kind of like out of this area. This one's too blue. I want to find one that looks cool. What is this? White dwarf star with shooting out. I can't remember what they're called. They're like pillars or something. But let's look for a cool one. I want one that looks similar to Earth. But just imagine if this is accurate, there could be so much life out there in the universe. Whoa, the water on this planet's looking cool. You can see the stars just everywhere. And here is the planet that has life according to Space Engine. Look at these mountain ranges. So on the Space Engine website, they eventually want to add. Oh, yeah, get the atmosphere on there. They want to add civilizations like that you can see. So you can see how advanced a civilization is. Um, so that'll be cool when they add that. So you can actually see like cities or whatever they want to do. Whatever they decide to do when they add that. You can see these like big lakes or oceans and they even have rivers that lead all the way to them. Um, this section. So it looks like these two lakes here. Oh, are they connected? Oh, they're barely not unless that might run underground. But like these water things are connected by rivers and this is almost like an ocean here. But check this out. I wonder if it'll show red plants if we land in this area. Because sometimes it does that. Yes, look. Life. We have confirmed plant life. And this blue sky looks so similar to Earth. Just flying around here is insane. Let's see what other planets it found with life in this area. In this one cluster, this is how much life we can find. This one's okay. Let's see what else we got. No, not that one. Super Terra with life. Let's look at this one. So this one has a little bit of water. 
but it's mostly going to be desert or tundra as our temperature. Fairly cold, so it looks like this is going to be a tundra that has life most likely around the, and in this water. Land formations are looking beautiful. Can't wait for them to add waves and even like tides from the tidal forces of moons and such. Um, I think if this game accomplishes accomplishes everything that it has planned, it will be pretty much a perfect recreation of the universe. Which is crazy to think if we can create that now, what can we create in the future to simulate the universe? Oh look, there's little patches of green plants. And red plants too. And brown plants? Something. Oh, it has rings. I didn't even see those. This star cluster is so bright. It's crazy. Let's see what else we have in here. This one has a 91% Earth similarity index, which you can see right here. 91.3. So a one on that is going to be an exact copy of Earth. So it is cool to see how far we can, how close we can get to one on these planets we find. Okay, let's see what it's going to generate down here. What are these uh, rocks? Looks like a pretty rocky world. We got different rock formations next to each other. It does say it has life, so I want to see if there's any water. It says marine life, but I don't see any water on the surface. Oh, there we go. We're getting some. Let's go down and look at it. Okay, I think it's time that we leave the Milky Way entirely. Because we're already on the edge. But let's just leave the entire thing. So this will just really put into perspective how big the universe is. We did all of that in the Milky Way, which is just one galaxy. And every single one of these dots is a galaxy. They're not stars. These are galaxies. And you can fly any direction and just keep going through all of these galaxies. There's so much universe just from what we can see. The universe could be infinite, but we don't know because there's only a limit to how far we can see. This one looks really bright. I wonder why. Let's go look at this one. Is it this that was bright? Oh, whoa, look at this one. Irregular galaxy. So that means it's not like on a flat plane, but it's still a galaxy. It's so crazy how it looks like it could fit in the palm of my hands, this whole entire galaxy. But if you go in it, you realize the scale, how big just each galaxy is. So let's find a planet in here. Right away we find a marine super terra with good oceans it looks like. Kind of a yellow atmosphere, which is not that pretty but immediately we find a planet that could harbor life in a completely random galaxy this is a beautiful galaxy I do like it let's see what other cool things we can find this gas giant the bands on this look pretty different than what I usually see in this game Dark colors mixed with light colors. Usually they're about the same colors. So it's cool to see something like that. With its moons. I want to check out what these uh, gas giant would look like from one of these moons. So let's go land here. Whoa, there it is. Let's, I wonder if... I don't know if it's tidally locked. 
We're going to find out. It has an atmosphere, but we're going to get rid of that for now. And speed up time. See what happens here. Oh, yeah. So it is. It looks like it is tidally locked because it's not moving relative to it. So is that an eclipse or are we seeing the actual thing? It looks like it's an eclipse. Um, which we could actually go view. So we just, all we really need to do is go in this dark spot and see what's blocking. I can't even see it. We just back up. That's a big shadow that it's casting. I wonder what it could be from. Oh, I see it. It's this thing. Right? Is it? I actually don't know. It From afar, it looks like... Or I guess I made it go away. It could have been another planet. To be cool. Look at that. Is that another galaxy we can view from this galaxy? Yeah, it is. Look. This is the really massive galaxy. This galaxy is so big. Whoa. This is, I think this is that bright thing we were looking at earlier. There's so many stars here. The universe is massive. Every single one of these dots is a star that could have life or just planets and could have different things on it. And we can click on them and see what they are. Okay, here's a black hole. We haven't seen one of those yet in the video. This is what a black hole looks like in Space Engine. And it looks like there are some satellites or I guess just some things that are orbiting the black hole. Let's land on this planet and see if we can zoom in on the black hole. So let's find that black hole again. It's right there. This planet is orbiting around this black hole. So black holes are super tiny. Oh, you can start to see the distortion. I guess Space Engine doesn't really like when you zoom in on black holes from far away. But it would be right there. Um, so it's like way dimmer than a lot of the stars. So it's almost like if you were on this planet, you wouldn't know what, where you, what you were orbiting around. That's awesome. This planet. Oh, another black hole. You can find supermassive black holes at the center of galaxies. So let's try to find the one at the center of this galaxy. So you should be able to find it if you just focus on the galaxy and then kind of fly into the middle. And then when you see a bunch of really bright stars, that's kind of how you know you're getting there. Oh, I think that might be it or close to it. Let's, I think the black hole might be in this little cluster. It's kind of hard to tell, though. Maybe not. Maybe it's just a star cluster that happens to be right in the center. Whoa, look. This, these are moving. I don't think it's supposed to do that. They're not supposed to move. Just like the way the camera's angled. Let's see if we can find another really bright, because look how bright that galaxy is compared to the rest around here. So let's fly through the universe and try to find a really bright one. That one's bright-ish. Let's take a look at it. It looks so small. Not a, like, on a flat plane, but the amount of stars in this galaxy is insane. The whole thing is like a star cluster. But it looks like there's a ton of stuff, but isn't it crazy that we never run into a star? Like, look. 
Because if we ran into one, the game would stop us in like at the star. So it just shows how empty space is, even though there's so much stuff in it. And yeah, these stars emit a lot of light, but the actual like size of them compared to the size of the universe is tiny because even if I aim for a star, I mean, if I go slow enough, I could probably hit it. No, I'm still going through it. Ah, see, it's like so hard to hit it, even though it's right there. Oh, okay, see, I hit it. That's what it would take to hit one. And I kept missing it, even though I was right next to it. So it's crazy that we would never hit a star. Like, the chances of hitting it is so small. Just flying through a galaxy. You could just fly straight through a galaxy and you would most likely not hit a star. That's insane. All right, well, I thank you guys for coming on this exploration journey with me. If this is something you guys want to see more of, just like relaxing and exploring in Space Engine, leave a like on the video. You guys are awesome. I'll see you next time.